Hi everybody, welcome to this week's uh, mentality tip. Last mentality tip I started talking about the core warrior beliefs and values and how important they are and I started to set up a framework for everybody. And that framework that I started to establish was an understanding of how it works as a system. How does our beliefs and our perceptions function as a system and why do we have to understand that? We know that we have perceptions and beliefs and those perceptions, what they create is an emotional response enough to varying levels of intensity, either low, moderate, or high levels of intensity. The levels of intensity will reflect and directly impact the actions that we take. Now, why this is so important that everybody understands that what our perceptions are leads to the emotional intensity that we feel it, and that leads to our actions is very simple. The actions is what we're trying to ultimately change. That is, anytime you set a goal and you want to obtain a goal, before you ever even can think about obtaining a goal, you have to have changed a perception or belief or the way you feel about that goal. Think about it this way. If you've ever looked back in your life, if you can reflect for a second and think about something that you've wanted to obtain, a goal, whether it was a uh, type of vehicle you wanted to own, a, a, a certain job you wanted to get, a standard of living you wanted to obtain to, um, losing 10 pounds, whatever it is, anytime you've ever set a goal, the only thing that allowed you to obtain that goal is that your perceptions or your beliefs, basically remember what does our body do? It thinks, it sees something and it asks itself a very powerful question. What does this mean to me? How is this going to affect me? And what happens is you either start attaching a lot of pain or pleasure to the ultimate achievement of that goal. I want to make more money. Oh man, I'd have to get a second job. I'd have to work longer hours. This, All of these things put so much pain attached to that that you never take the action. That pain creates feelings. Very intense feelings. That's, all, that's uncomfortable. I don't want to work extra hours. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. And you know what? Then you probably never, I know for a fact, you never obtain that goal. If you set the goal of saying, I want to, I want to make more money, or I want to do this, and all of a sudden, and you started thinking about the things that you could do with the money. Man, I start working an extra couple hours, work overtime two or three times a week, picking up extra money in the paycheck. I can buy this new quad. I can go on this trip. I can do this. I can do that. All of a sudden, you started attaching a lot of pleasurable emotions to it. And I guarantee you, those immense, uh, uh, powerful, positive emotions allowed you to perform the action, to make the sacrifice, work the extra hours, because you had a positive outlook on that. And of course, then ultimately you obtain the goal and you, you know, get the results of that, whether it's the new toy or whether it's the vacation or whether it's just having more money in the bank, a bigger house, whatever it is. This is the way it works. This is how we function as human beings. It's no different when it comes to combat. You have to understand how your beliefs work, the pain-pleasure model attached to it, uh, how we, uh, what we interpret our experiences. So everyone has experiences. And when you have these experiences, it's important to understand that we can either look at an experience negatively or positively. And it all based off the questions that we ask ourselves. We have the beliefs, we have the emotions. We know that we're going to feel emotions on different emotional intensity levels, and that's what we're looking for. The things that are going to benefit us, the beliefs that we want to have, you want to take them beyond question. Having said this, when we have this emotional certainty, and we've taken it to that level, there's one other aspect that I want you to understand. And that is that within our beliefs, we are going to have beliefs that fall into one of three categories. They're either going to be specific beliefs, global beliefs, or they're going to be identity beliefs. I want you to understand first a specific belief. When it comes to combat or any other aspect of our life, you'll have a specific belief. Take, for example, uh, John Smith. He's a guy that we know. He's a great guy. We've known him for years. We know that we're really close friends, and he has our best interest at heart. Well, one day we have an argument. We, words are said. Actions are taken. You know what I mean? And at the end of the day, though, my specific belief allows me to go, listen, at the, core, at the core of it all, this guy's got my back. He's a great friend of mine. It doesn't change how I feel about him. It doesn't change the action in the way that I treat him and our friendship is able to continue on. I, because I had a specific belief that I had a tremendous amount of emotional certainty about. I just know this guy ultimately has my back. That's a split specific belief. Now, my specific belief about John Smith doesn't necessarily reflect how I feel about people in general. Because people in general, they're backstabbing mother uppers. You know what I mean? It's like these are the people that you give them half a chance and they'll rob you blind. Okay, now all of a sudden what you're seeing is an example of a global belief. How I feel about people in general. Okay? 
an identity belief goes to how I feel about myself personally. And here's one of the easiest ways to figure out and get, an, get a feel for an identity belief. Stand in front of a mirror or stand up in front of a group of people and as you stand up in front of these people, say, I'd like to have everyone's attention. I thought you all just needed to know that I am one of the best looking people you were ever going to meet on the entire planet. I mean, look at me. I'm amazing. The second that you say that, you are either going to burst out laughing. You won't even get through that because you're going to start laughing. Or you're going to, I know some of you guys watch, you're going to sit there going, That's, you couldn't have said a true statement. He's obviously talking about me right now. Okay, that is an identity belief. Do you think you're good looking? Do you think you're good with money? Do you think you're funny? Do you think you're, you know what I mean, a strong alpha male? Do you think that, you know, you're a moron? Whatever it is, we have all developed these identity beliefs over the years. A lot of our identity beliefs can be very limiting. They can be disempowering. A lot of them can be very empowering. It is important when you start going through, because after this segment, I'm going to start going in and bringing up a lot of the actual core warrior beliefs and values. It's important that you're able to look at a belief when I'm talking about it and then be able to decipher whether it is a specific belief, a global belief, or an identity belief. A lot of times you will have a specific or a global belief about combat that you go, man, I really believe that, Greg. That is absolutely true. But what will happen is all of a sudden you'll look at your identity belief and how, that, the, how this um, specific or global belief what it actually means to you in terms of your capability to execute on that and you can have a conflict there. So just because you believe something globally that is absolutely true about combat, you may have a limiting identity belief that stops you or prevents you from really being able to functionalize that and actualize it in an actual fight, combat, or in some other aspect of your life. So does everybody follow me on the importance of being able to identify specific global and identity beliefs? Okay, the thing that I want to leave you with in this mentality tip, I just want you to really get your head around that. We have the perceptions, which leads to our feelings with the different emotional intensities, which ultimately determine our actions, and we want to increase the standard of action. We want to live a life of conviction. We understand that the three different levels of emotional intensity, but we also, with our beliefs, have three different types of belief, specific uh, global and identity. So on your chart, now underneath your beliefs, draw a line underneath the beliefs, the three different emotional intensities, write uh, specific global and identity. Because as we go through our beliefs, I want you to identify whether it's a specific global or identity belief. And then we're going to be able to take you through that and write that out. What I want to leave you today is a very, what I call the absolute be beginning. This is much more of a global belief and you'll understand because each individual you will have an identity belief about this, what you believe about it. But here's a global belief. There's a global belief and this is the absolute beginning. Warriors are not born warriors. They are trained, nurtured and developed week by week, day by day, month by month and year by year. Both skill and knowledge passed down from warrior to warrior. That is an absolute true statement that I believe to the level of absolute conviction. Nobody comes out of the womb with an innate sense of how to use a knife or how to relay destructiveness through predatory violence, through gouging eyes, headbutt, knee, and an elbow. We're not born that way. There is not the hand of God or some DNA within us that we're preordained to be predisposed to being great warriors. It doesn't work that way. You are trained, nurtured, and developed. Warrior to warrior. That is how you do this. Why is that the absolute beginning? Because ask yourself right now, write that down as a global belief. How do you feel about that statement? Do you feel that that statement is accurate and true beyond question? Or do you feel that, no, no, man, what about Tiger Woods and what about Gretzky's and Jordan's? There's just people that are born to do what they do and Paul Vlinix and Dan and Asano's. And I'll tell you firsthand, it's a bunch of bullshit. These guys train hard. They have spent a lifetime of sacrifice. When they had a decision about going out and saying, you know, what do you do Friday night? Oh, I'm going to go camping. You know what Vu is doing? Training. Oh, I'm going to go here and take a trip for two weeks and go to Mexico. You know what they're doing? I'm going to go to retreat in the mountains with Guru Dan and spend two weeks with that guy training. They have spent so many hours and sacrificed so much to get where they're at. They did not come out of the womb that way. You need to, as warriors, believe that at your very core. Because if you can believe that and build it up to the emotional intensity and the certainty, then you know that your capability, wherever it stands right now, has no bearing on how good you get at this. Sacrifice, train, want it, work for it, make the decision to do it, develop them a powerful positive associations with it, and you will become the ultimate warrior that you want to be.
Okay? So I'm going to leave you with that for this week. That's the food for thought. Next week we can continue on, and I'm going to start hitting you guys with two or three different beliefs and let you work through it from there. Okay, everybody, so until next time, take care and come what may.